A couple is passionately making out in the woods, unaware they're being live-streamed. Viewers can even control the environment like it's a big reality show. But suddenly, they unknowingly activate the zombie horror mode of this live performance. This is The Cabin in the Woods, hailed as the most subversive horror film ever. Over 200,000 viewers rated it 7.6, featuring 30-plus classic horror movie monsters. Its unconventional battle royale setup left viewers absolutely thrilled. The final scene is a wild explosion of the director's twisted imagination. The story begins with Dana and her friend discussing weekend getaway plans. They meet Marty and Holden, heading to Kurt's cousin's cabin in the suburbs. They're having fun, oblivious to the nightmare awaiting them. Every move they make in the cabin is being monitored by a secret organization. They're even deciding which monsters to unleash on the group. How can you bet at a time like this? When you control the outcome. Oh, we just put them in the kitchen. They escape from there. Meanwhile, the five play, truth or dare, daring Jules to make out with a wolf head. Little do they know, deadly chaos is about to unfold. Suddenly, the cellar door springs open, startling everyone. They decide to investigate the basement. It's full of strange artifacts. Kurt picks up a puzzle ball and examines it. He's unaware he's about to trigger the hellish nightmare that awaits, as Dana reads from a diary. The film's first monsters, the Buckners, appear. Later, Kurt and Jules are about to get intimate when the opening scene unfolds. Jules's blood is mysteriously injected into a hidden mechanism. After the blonde girl was killed by the werewolf, Brother Hammer fled to the cabin, planning to gather everyone to leave together. However, Dana insisted on finding her best friend until... Everyone quickly hid in their rooms. Marty accidentally touched a lamp, discovering a hidden microphone. But then suddenly... Meanwhile... Horton and Dana frantically discovered a basement. However, Horton was caught by an iron chain hidden in the shadows. In a life or death moment, Dana grabbed a nearby sickle and stabbed repeatedly, finally killing the zombie. Simultaneously, Brother Thrash joined them in the basement. The trio rushed to an RV, planning to escape. As they approached a tunnel, the mysterious group was shocked to find it intact when it should have been destroyed. However, the tunnel was then detonated, forcing the three to drive away. Faced with a deep chasm, they stood helplessly at the cliff's edge, feeling utterly hopeless. Brother Thrash decided to jump the gap on his motorcycle, but what happened next stunned Dana and Horton. Brother Thrash crashed into an invisible wall, resulting in a fatal collision. With no options left, Dana and Horton drove off in another direction, but Horton didn't make it. Now, only Dana remained alive from the group of five. After the car crash, Dana fell into water. Upon reaching shore, she was confronted by an iron-wielding zombie. Ironically, the mysterious group was enjoying themselves until a phone call suddenly silenced everyone. The other survivor is Marty, who was dragged away by zombies earlier. He's still alive. After rescuing Dana, they ran to the cabin. The Buckner family's girl appeared, so they hid in a nearby tomb. Inside, they found a mysterious elevator. Turns out, the monsters were sent up from there. With no choice, they entered. As it descended, more monsters appeared before them. The next moment brings the most iconic scene in horror film history. Using a zombie arm, they took out a guard. More guards forced them into a room where they found the monster elevator switch. They exchanged looks. Let's get this party started. 
Dana boldly hit the switch. Instantly, demons invaded the building. A truly horrifying sight. Horror fans will love this scene. Nearly every famous movie monster appears in this moment. It's a grand reunion, a monster carnival. After a chaotic bloodbath, the mysterious organization's members were decimated. Dana and Marty fled, stumbling into the ritual site where their dead friend's blood was injected. Five human figures were carved on the wall representing them. A mysterious woman, seemingly the leader, appeared. She explained they were chosen for their youth, adding they die for sins by their own hands. She was destroyed. She died first. Athletes, scholars, fools, all perished in the horror they sacrificed for. Only life or death remained, decided by fate. This line reveals the film's main theme. At this point, the story unveils its final chapter. It turns out that to protect the world from ancient gods trapped underground, this mysterious group planned a large-scale reality show. They selected diverse people to sacrifice, ensuring these gods remain below. Just then, Dana, heart racing, raised her gun at Marty. But the next second, the gun went off. Marty grabbed the gun, killed the werewolf, then fought the female leader. With help from the Buckner girl, he defeated the leader. Both he and the girl plunged into the abyss. After feeding the ancient gods in the battle, Dana and Marty sat together, sharing a final cigarette. Moments later, the old evil gods erupted. Story over. All in all, this film plays with expectations until very end. The Cabin in the Woods has all the horror movie tropes, but it's not your typical cliché plot. It explores humanity, traps, and evil, reflecting not on God, but on us. It meets and subverts horror expectations, breaking conventions. It's both a satirical and landmark film.